Good evening, cult members, and welcome to the Pop Culture Cult. This is Sean, and this is going to be the Rebel Files Special Edition book review. And that's right, we're going to review a book here on the Rebel Files. And the newest one from Claudia Gray and Delray Books is called Master and Apprentice. It is the story of Qui-Gon Jinn and Obi-Wan Kenobi about seven years before The Phantom Menace. Uh, the cover is amazing, by the way. I'm looking at the cover right now, and uh, with Qui Gon and Obi Wan lightsabers lit up and stuff. This is um, this is Claudia Gray, and I I love Claudia Gray. She is one of my favorite, if not my favorite, Star Wars canon authors right now. Uh, she did Lost Stars, which is one of my favorite ones of all time. Uh, she did uh, Bloodline. I got. To a certain point in Bloodline, then I had to stop listening because I was going to cry. Uh, <laughs> and then um, uh, she did Leia, Princess of Alderaan. She's she's got an idea what she's doing within the Star Wars canon books, and this book is very interesting. I f it, it because it is before a Phantom Menace, about seven years or so. You get the groundwork with a lot of different things that you will make sense for you further on. The story itself is about um, Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan have been asked uh, by another Jedi who is a regent of this planet called Pajal. And that Jedi is called Rail Ver uh, Varus. Uh, Arvis, Air, I don't know how to say his name. Uh, this is what happens when you listen to a book. Uh, Rail, Je Jedi Knight Rail, is a regent of a planet who he had lost a Padawan er, early in that Padawan's life. And as, as a make good for him, he was asked to go be this regent for a princess who was too young to be queen on this foreign planet. And the story itself is how uh, they there's stuff going on in the, uh, the as we're getting close to the queen being coronated as queen, uh, and uh, they're signing a new contract with this uh, big bad corporation, uh, and they um, use indentured servitude with. Uh, as you know, slavery as their main main workforce, and so they they are not good people, and so they and there's there's these attacks that are going on, and so the rail needs another set of eyes, and he has a previous relationship with Obi Wan because they were both apprenticed to Count Dooku, and so they go to uh, Pajal to help out in this investigation and to ratify the const this new constitution that will build a relationship between the corporation and Pajal and all that kind of stuff. That story right, right there is, is pretty cool. There's jewel thieves and and slavery is talked about and there's light lightsaber fights and all that kind of stuff and it's a lot of fun that story itself. But for me this book is an origin story for Qui-Gon Jinn. Not necessarily from when he was young through his Padawan days, becoming a Jedi Knight, and moving on. There is some of that in there. But it's more of how he became the person that we know in The Phantom Menace who would take a leap of faith in the Force to say that this young child that he comes across, Anakin Skywalker, is the chosen one. And so you learn about why he has a definity for prophecy and stuff which he learned from Count Dooku and in the flashback scenes with Qui-Gon and Dooku they spend a lot of time looking into and studying prophecies that are part of the Jedi library and stuff like that and the council Yoda Mace Windu they all question looking into prophecies and they all feel that looking into prophecies uh, to try to learn what's going to happen in the future so they can control it is a way to lead to the dark side. 
And you get a lot of that feel when it comes to stuff with Dooku, but you get also get that feel when Obi Wan and or not uh, well a little bit with Obi Wan, but but more with Qui Gon. And they mention that he's touched the dark, and once you touch the dark, you will always have a little bit of a pull to the dark. But he sees the prophecies as an educational tool to further understand the force not the dark side but the force there's also a lot of why he makes decisions the way he does they offer him the seat on the on the Jedi Council in this book and you also get the strain of the relationship that was already strained before they were at they asked him to be on the council between Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan and even more after once Obi-Wan finds out kind of by mistake that Qui-Gon has been offered this seat and and although it's happened in the past many Jedi don't have Padawans while on the on the council and so Obi-Wan's trying to find his place as a Padawan with his master and Qui-Gon's trying to find his place as a master and maybe on the Jedi Council and his place in the force and so you learn about all of this stuff and and you see why you get Qui-Gon asking these questions and pushing the council in Force Awakens, or in Force Awakens. Wow, foreshadowing. Uh, in Phantom Menace. If you're, a, if you're a fan of the prequels, you're going to really, really like all the stuff that's in this book. If you're um, a non-believer of the prequels, you may... Ne- after you read this book may get a better appreciation for some of the decision making that's specifically made in force awakens but has over well overall ish uh, oh i'm really tired guys i've done four of these tonight so it, it's just it affects everything going into the prequels and i think that's just a really interesting story trope there's you know they talk about slavery that's another book lately that they've done where they've talked about slavery as a major secondary story or third level story uh they did it in queen's shadow and a lot of the discussion of why the jedi council isn't doing anything why is the, Re- the republic has outlawed it but not really enforcing that all outlawing and corporations with the indentured servitude kind of getting around it and stuff that's all very very interesting um i love the audiobooks too i I, i'm not a big reader Uh, i can read i just i don't like doing it but i do like listening to the audiobooks and the audiobooks they do a really good job with the production of the stories and they they do uh when the lightsaber lights up you hear the lightsaber when they're talking in a cave there's an echo you you hear the ship in the background where on a ship and i really appreciate the production level uh claudia gray is you know like i said earlier one of my favorite star wars authors right now i really like her i really wish she'd come to phoenix comic-con um but overall i think this book is definitely worth the read if you have any connection with Obi-Wan, if you have any connection with Qui-Gon Jinn, this is a, definitely a book that you're going to dig, dig a lot uh, out of. And you're going to have lots of little things added in, maybe like little secondary comments or maybe a thought process that were, are going to directly connect you with A Phantom Menace. And that, as I really appreciate. Overall, worth the read. You'll like it. I liked it. Share with your friends and let them know. Read this book. While you're sharing with your friends, that's called a transition, follow us on whatever podcast feed you're following, whatever YouTube channel you are following us on. Subscribe to this channel. Help us out and share it with your friends. Like and rate on all those podcast things. We're also on all the social media stuff that's all in the description. We're also on Patreon. You can sign up for Patreon at $1 level. We're pushing for a Star Wars goal there too. So please help us out by subscribing on Patreon and all that other stuff. Thank you for listening, cult members. And may the Force be with you always. (laughs) 